Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Because in the khutbah, Shaykh Afendi's words, in the sohbat, he said, we're not afraid from no one. We're not afraid from no governments. We're afraid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is real. But Shaykh Afendi, when he says it, he is real. How he's saying that with reality? He's not just not just saying because he prays so much or because he makes zikr so much or because he even enter into seclusion so much. It's because he lived life and he faced the tyrants and he stood up against the tyrants. Correct? By himself, alone. He stood up against the tyrants and he was tortured so many ways. Both tyrants from governments or tyrants from people around him. The tyranny of the people around him, you have power that wants to push him down. He stood up against that. He is sometimes he's patient, sometimes he's standing up to fight against that. He went through that. And he went through it, putting everything there. Sacrificing everything. When did he sacrifice everything? Here, because you asked me the question, how do you become brave? I'm not going to answer how I become brave. Astaghfirullah. We are not, but we are following those ones who are very brave. We study them. We understand what they went through. We're not asking for the same tests. Because we cannot go through it. But we're asking if we are going through something similar, may Allah give us some of their bravery. Amen. This is how you're going to learn. How did Shaykh Afendi, when did Shaykh Afendi, Shaykh Abdul Karim Afendi, when did he become brave? When did he, with that bravery, he sacrificed everything and he put everything there, including his life? And how old was he? He was not 40 years old when he did that. He was not 60 years old when he did that. He did that when he was 19 years old. Life has just begun. And he fought like, for the sake of Allah. He put his life there. From a very young age, he knows what it is to sacrifice your life. Maybe some of you here have sacrificed your life, but it is arguable whether it is for the sake of Allah or for the sake of family or for the sake of nationality or for the sake of politics, for the sake of democracy or for the sake of this or for the sake of that. It is still sacrifice. It is still good, but it is not the same as those who sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how he became brave from a young age. He put everything down there. What are we sacrificing? We cannot do that. You say, well, opportunity is not given to me. To me. But what are you doing now to be brave against to who? First, against your own tyranny, against your own laziness, against your own heedlessness, against to other people. How are you fighting against your own anger? Huh? I just read, this is very popular now. Everyone is knowing what is going on with the fighting world. Everyone is, all the Muslim world is very bubbling because of that fight. Huh? Everyone is saying, okay, this is good, this is bad, this is this, this is that. But the Allah, they're going to look beyond that. Specifically, I was reading this hadith today. The man who is strong is not the one who wrestles. He used the word exactly. Who is a wrestler. He is not the one who wrestles. Good. He is the one who can what? Fight against his anger. He can wrestle his anger. He can put down his anger. Is the strong man is not the one who is physical and he can wrestle other people. The strong man is the one who can control his own anger. Because that anger now, it can bring a person who is all the way up to all the way down. Understand? Now you may say it is righteous anger. Who is giving you that permission now to do that? Or are you just according to your own stomach, according to your own idea, according to your own opinion? Then that is according to your own opinion. You cannot say that is according to the opinion of Allah and His Prophet. You cannot say now you are doing it for the sake of your religion. If you're saying, I'm doing this for the sake of the religion, I'm standing up for the sake of my religion and everything, then you have more responsibility now. You cannot behave any way that you want. You cannot look anywhere that you look. You cannot say any word that you want to say. 
and you cannot stand up or sit down any way that you want. You have to follow now because you say you're trying to be a good role model for the religion. You have to follow that too. Otherwise, it's not complete and you may lose. You will win, but you may also lose. Yeah, we are seeing that. So, it is observing these ones. When did they stand up? When did they be quiet? When were they alone? When were they together? Then we learn step by step how to become brave. Our Sheikh, like I said, he fought in that war in Cyprus. Then a couple of years later, he was sent all alone here to this whole continent, not even knowing anything. He had to fight again against the unknown. So in every way, you see that Allah is putting him through difficulty. It is only with the difficulty that you are going to reach to high stations. If you think you're going to reach to high station sitting comfortable and making a couple of zikr and a couple of namaz, you're going to reach the high station, we're going to ask you, which prophet you're following? Which prophet you're following? Which prophet? They just make some zikr and they just pray without going through difficulties and they become beloved to Allah. Every prophet was a fighter. Every prophet was a fighter for the truth. Not for their own comfort, for the comfort of those ones who are hurting them. Those ones who want to destroy them continuously. They are praying, protecting the people and praying for those ones to turn around. How you become brave? You become brave when you understand what is it that's giving you fear. What do you fear the most? You fear that the most. What are you doing about it according to Allah and His Prophet? You're trying to understand that. You're trying to solve that riddle, that problem, that question in you. You become most brave. What do people fear the most? They fear to lose. What do people love the most? What the Quran and the words of the Prophet was saying, what they love to gain. What is it that they love the most? Wealth, sons, possession, power. Look to yourself. You may say, no, 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 I don't like power. Of course you like power. You become a father. Uh, your son is not listening to you. Uh, listening to someone else, you get very upset. You like the wealth. Who doesn't like the wealth? You feel pulled to it. You say, no, no, I don't like today's people. They play around with words. I don't like wealth. I just want to be comfortable. You want to be comfortable? Then you're going to be comfortable away to the Prophet. The way that the Prophet is comfortable. You want to be tested with that? Oh, oh. the Prophet one day he eats, one day he doesn't eat. Not because he was following the Sunnah of Dawud One day he fasts, one day he eats. But because there was no food. Uh, the difficulties that he went through. Now, that makes a man, when he's facing those difficulties, to become strong. When a man is strong, he's brave. Because he understands where his weakness is. Where is his weakness? Some people say, my weakness is that for my possessions, for my title, for my house, for my children, that is my weakness. Then understand that whatever that you own there, Allah is giving it to you. It is not yours. And Allah can take it away from you. That is the reality. It is not yours. Give everything to his own owner. Don't claim it. Then once you are separating yourself from these things, then you are not making these th things to weaken you because you understand them. You love them, you take care of them, but not the same attachment you're going to have for them. Then that time, nobody can threaten you with that. You understand? Now we look at our Shaykh now. How did he become brave? He stood up. He left everything. There was no family, wealth, this, that. We see his whole life. He left everything. He left everything and he came here. He got everything. He left everything again. 
Everything was given to him again. He left it again. He became millionaire so many times and he lost it so many times. He has families so many times and the families all not with him so many times. Correct. He is with Jamaat so many times and Jamaats leave him also. They betray him so many times. Ah, now that, when you're going through it, then you understand, oh, this world, it is a lying world. Ya Allah dunya. This world, it comes and it goes. Don't take these things too seriously. Then that time, you become very brave because no one can take it away from you because you don't own anything. You say, you want to take this? You want to take my car? It doesn't belong to me. My house? It doesn't belong to me. My children? Allah is their creator. This is not so easy. You have to go through so much in your life to actually go through it, to understand what is this bravery, how we become brave. Because a man may be brave for himself, but what he loves is his weakness. Correct? His weakness is what he loves. Because he's putting his heart there. If you can love without putting your heart there, they are not a weakness to you. They become a source of strength for you. As that ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Surah Al-Baqarah, no? There are those that they're putting up partners to Allah. They love them more than they love Allah. But those ones who love Allah the most, they are the best. So we want to love Allah the most. Allah is giving us already so much. We should not forget that. That way we can be brave. Understand? Because we are with those ones, holding on to them, and their braveness will rub off on us. Because you understand how weak you are, you will ask for that strength. If you understand how much of a weak, how much of a coward we are, and we ask Allah to say, Ya Rabbi, give me. Make me to be those ones who are brave. Allah will surround you with the brave ones slowly. You will get their perfume. You will get their color. You will learn how to be as well. This is the only way. You can read thousands of books. You will never have that same kind of uh, transmission of knowledge. Because the knowledge is not just words, ink on a paper. Ink on paper is not knowledge. You understand? The knowledge is a spirit, the heart that is pouring into another heart. Inshallah. We're asking, may our hearts always be open to our share.